Ah, okay. Hey, I'm John, your friend in tech. I just got back from Google I.O. And I've got to say, one of the highlights of my software engineering career is having my hard work celebrated and featured on Google's largest stage. Like foldables and tablets. <laughs> See you right there. For those of you who may not know, Google I.O. is Google's annual developer conference and it's always an exciting time because it's when Google gets to share all of the new stuff that they've been working on with the rest of the world. Who thinks we should try a bunch of live demos on the new Pixel Fold? <laughs> Google invited a bunch of employees to come and attend and watch the keynote live. So me and a couple of coworkers were able to go down to Shoreline Amphitheater in Mountain View, which is where Google I.O. takes place. Despite having to catch the bus at 6.30 this morning, I actually had a really great time. There was live music, there was a ton of food, we ate breakfast and lunch there, plus there's a bunch of snacks. My team and I were seated kind of far, but we actually had a really good view of the stage and we also got to see MKBHD, which is pretty text cool. Prompt and text to music using but yeah, definitely the best part of Google I.O. was getting to see all the cool stuff that Google announced and getting to see the public's reaction to it. And that means I can get a high quality, ultra wide, amazing selfie with the best camera on the device. Speaking of which, and you knew where this was going, <laughs> smile everybody. <laughs> I always wanted to do that at Google I.O. keynote. Sorry. <laughs> if you haven't seen any of the announcements so far, here's a quick recap. AI, AI, generative AI, AI, generative AI, powered by AI. So there was a lot of talk about AI, but there were other cool announcements too, like the new Pixel phone, tablet, and foldable, which is what I've been working on for over the past year. I'll talk a bit more about what feature I worked on in a future video, but in this video, I wanted to talk about my career path and how out of all the things I could have been doing with my computer science degree, I ended up working at Google on Android. First, I want to talk about my background and why I even decided to study computer science in the first place. I mentioned this before, but I didn't really know what computer science was when I chose as my major. I just knew that I would learn how to code, and I wanted to learn how to code because I wanted to learn how to build websites. So right off the bat, I was following my interest, and as simple as it is, knowing what you're interested in doing is definitely super helpful in figuring out your career path. So one of the hard things about choosing a career in tech, or even just in general, is that there's so many different things that you could do, and you don't really know what you want to do or what you like to do until you've at least tried it. That's why in college, I took a bunch of different classes and electives on all the different topics that I was interested in. And it was a pretty big range from things like cybersecurity to artificial intelligence to computer graphics. I really thought I would like cybersecurity a lot more just because of the way that it's represented on TV and in media, I thought it'd be really cool. And don't get me wrong, it is cool. There's a lot of interesting problems to solve in that space, but it just wasn't for me. And I wouldn't have known that unless I tried it. The classes that I really enjoyed the most were the classes where I learned how to make games, how to build web apps, and how to build mobile apps on Android. By looking at what all the classes I enjoyed had in common with each other, I learned that I really enjoyed working on things that were visual and things that I could show or share with other people. Now let's get into how I gained real world experience. When it came time to grow my skills, I really looked for internships that aligned with my interests so that I could really gain the most out of the experience. But let's be real, internships are really competitive and really hard to get into. So especially in the beginning, I was willing to accept any internship that I could get. So I was looking into internships for gaming, web development, and Android development because that's what I was interested in. So when I was doing my research, like looking up internships in these different fields and trying to see what companies would be good to work for, I learned that the gaming industry is kind of toxic and super stressful, like really bad hours and crunch time and no work-life balance and stuff like that. And so as fun as it was to make games for myself and in classes, it wasn't really something that I wanted to pursue as a career. And so that helped narrow my choices down between web development and Android development for my internships. So I was able to land a few internships in college with the three internships I did at Google being the most notable. My first internship at Google was web development focused. I helped build an internal web app for the Google Flights team with two other interns and I really, really enjoyed that experience. From that experience, I learned that I could definitely see myself pursuing web development as a career. So I could have very easily just focused on web development internships for the rest of my college career, but I still wanted to give Android development a try. So for my next two internships at Google, they were both Android related. To be honest, I didn't have the best experience for my second internship just for the day-to-day -day work. And so that was a really big lesson for me. And I even contemplated not returning to Google for my third internship, but I wanted to give it another chance. And I found a team in New York City that was a really great match. And I had the best internship experience with them. In both of these internships, I learned a really big lesson in the importance of really enjoying what you're working on and the people that you're working with. And that's really important to know. And I think that it's actually something that you won't really realize how impactful it is until you've lived through those kind of experiences. All in all, I've taken all of my internships and gathered 
with all of that experience to help guide me when it came time to finding my first full-time role as a software engineer to start my career. After my last internship at Google, I did a really good job until they offered me a full-time position. So I already knew that after college, I would end up working at Google. I just didn't know what kind of career path I wanted to do. I ended up taking the summer after I graduated off and I spent that time traveling mostly, but I also took the time to really reflect on what kind of career I wanted to have. And I had two career paths that I could choose from either Android development or web development. Ultimately, I ended up choosing Android development to start my career as a software engineer just because that's where I was most skilled at. That's the topic that I found most interesting. And also because I really enjoyed my internship experience and I really got to get a taste of what it would be like to you know, do full-time Android development at Google and I really enjoyed it. Now that I knew that I wanted to start my career as an Android developer, I told that to my recruiter so that they could find me teams at Google that were working on Android and that had an open headcount from the day I wanted to start. I ended up interviewing with four different teams and these aren't the typical like technical interviews. These are more like cultural fit and interest fits and interviews are two-way streets. So I made sure to ask about things that were important to me. So I asked about things like, are there a lot of opportunities for growth? How is the work-life balance? And how social is the team? Because there's more to a career than just what you're working on, it's also about the people that you're working with. I ended up joining the Android home screen team because they checked all of the boxes that I wanted in a career. So it's been a great match and I really credit all the time and energy I spent in my earlier years. <clears throat> earlier years trying to figure out what kind of career I wanted to have, what are the things that I like to work on, and you know, what do I find important. Even now, I'm still learning and I'm still growing. As I take on new projects at work, it's still that same process of, you know, do I like what I'm doing? Do I like what I've been working on? Do I still want to continue doing that? Or do I want to try something new? So just because you started your career in one way doesn't mean that you're going to be stuck there or that you can only do that one thing. You can always switch teams, switch projects, switch companies even. In the beginning of the video, I said one of the hard things about having a career in tech is that there's so many different options to choose from but it's also one of the good things about having a career in tech because if you ever get bored with what you're doing or if you ever want to experiment and try something new there's a lot of different things that you could try and a lot of the skills that you learn as a software engineer are transferable to another role as a software engineer and i say that with a few caveats of course because not everything is transferable but a lot of the fundamentals are going to be the same the point that I wanted to make with this video is that everyone's career path is going to look a little bit different and I encourage you to try and figure out what that looks like for you. If you want to see the kind of stuff that I've been working on throughout my career as an Android developer at Google, check out my next video where I walk you through three of my favorite projects that I've worked on. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.